Our next question is, I've been feeling disconnected from my friends lately. How can I maintain and strengthen meaningful friendships as I get older and life gets busier? From Dale. Great question. What do you think, Spence? Life gets busy. How can you, yeah. I mean, look, it's funny. We talked about this before. Uh, when you're growing up, you have all the friends in the world, middle school, high school, college even. And then as we grow, lives happen, families happen, businesses happen. You get moved, relocated, whatever it is. And your, your circle of influence and friends diminishes. And I think as human beings, especially as men, but as, as, as humans, we crave that connectivity and that tribe and that, that group of people we can connect with. It does get fucking harder as we get older. And really what it means is you just have to be way more intentional with how you're reaching out to make things happen. Like we used to be able to just say, hey bro, what are you doing tonight? You wanna go grab, grab a bite to eat? The, the stage of life I'm in, that doesn't really work. Like I'm working off a calendar, I'm working off of you know planning things. And so it's easy to, if you don't plan and, and be intentional to go weeks without seeing and connecting with friends. Um, so my advice, what I try to do is just be extremely intentional with the friends that you want to connect with and keep them in your circle. Um, reach out to them. I actually have a little calendar in the in my uh, on my calendar. I've got a block of time in the evenings to outreach to certain friends. And I've got a list of friends that I want to stay in contact with, and I just kind of work through that rotation because it's easy for people to reach out when it's convenient or they want something. But it's the it's a random touch points. It's it's being there when they're going through a hard time. I think if somebody you're with or want to stay in contact with is going through a hard time, if you don't reach out and support or like be there for them during that, they're going to remember that. And so trying to make sure that the relationships you're building are intentional um, and that, uh, yeah, you're finding ways you're building with things into your system, into your days to, to stay in contact. So for me, it's it's outreach. It's the end of the day. I just kind of send a text, do a phone call, do a, do a video and send that out. Um, but it gets, it gets harder, man, because life gets busy, businesses, families, kids, all those things. And before you know it, weeks go by and you lose that connection with people. So, yeah. I think trying to be the always try to be like the first one just to reach out, even if it's just like, uh, like uh, same thing happens to me moving back to Arizona. I have a whole mess of cousins here that I just haven't seen, yep. or heard from from years. So I get back here, and you know they're treating me great. It's like I never left or something. But then it's just like, man, I felt guilty. I was like, man, I never even shot them a text. Mm. I never tried to like reach out or talk to them or see how they were doing. Like I would sometimes see them on social media. I was like, oh crap. Yeah. So like it remind me like I just got to be the first one to reach out even if it's just text being like yeah. hey hi what's up or I'm doing something this weekend and even if they can't go it's like hey at least at least I'm talking at least there's a dialogue so it doesn't feel so strange when yeah. you text them yeah well and your circle gets smaller as you get I mean as you get older it's gonna it's I think if you're learning and growing and evolving as a human you're going to outgrow and kind of grow out of some circles of friends and I think that's a, a totally natural healthy thing. Um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting process to go through, for sure. Yeah, I think just uh, understanding how things change is important. For example, I think, you know, we started, and, and when we started the business, we were in kind of the same stage of life. Mm -hmm. Now our lives have been changed in very different ways, like yeah. married, kids, on the way, all these things, and and I don't, I don't, I'm not in that position. And so it's interesting, because I'm like the last single guy of all my friends, and what I've realized is the way that I have to engage with them is very different than it, than it was before because of schedules and times. And now, like, I'm so busy with the company and things that I'm doing in my life, there's just, to your point, very little free time. And so I think the, the number one way that I have, uh, that I would answer this question is by understanding that, like, as your life changes, how you engage with people is going to change. And that doesn't mean that you like them or they like you any more or less. It just means that you have to be more intentional. Yeah. Um, and I like your idea of just being super intentional with time and, and making commitments to do things. And um, I think, you know, just trying to put something uh, like, a, 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 you know, with a couple of my, my really good friends, we have like a couple of touch points throughout the month. It's like, hey, we're going to always try to grab dinner, you know, mm -hmm. on this day or get together on this day. And it's just like, kind of uh, not set in stone, but kind of like loose plans that we just have. And it's like, oh, I know I'm going to see my buddy Ravi probably once or twice a month for dinner. I know I'm going to hang out with Jason once or twice on the weekend, see the yeah. kids like. And so I just kind of make space for these things and then just allow them to evolve. If it comes up cool, if it, if it works, it doesn't. But um, just I think it's to your point when you're younger, you don't have to have any intention with the way that you hang out with your friends. And then as we get older, our lives get busier. We just have to have a lot more intention and then understand that it has not like oftentimes I think people get frustrated because 
maybe they haven't heard from someone right away or you haven't heard from someone or yet, you know, whatever. And it's just like, just don't take it personal. Yeah. You know, I think we're all busy now more than ever. And so I would say, don't take things personal. Understand that, you know, as life changes, you have to be more intentional with the things that you want to do. Yeah. And have an expect like the right expectations, right? Like as you get older, that that group is going to diminish and get smaller. In my opinion, like for me, I'm optimizing business, family, and like the friend group is important for me to continue to have, but I don't need 30 friends that I stay in contact with and see all the time, right? It can be a much smaller group, but have much deeper connections and relationships. And that's how, how I can try to prioritize because you don't have time to do all the things, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Thanks, Dale. That's a great question. Dale. Thanks, Brother Dale. And it sounds like we need to get Anthony caught up to where we are in life. So, ladies, you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> Please submit your applications to ask at livebearded.com. Uh, Did we ever tell you? You don't know this story. When we were going to start Live Bearded, not when we, when we started Live Bearded, we were trying to come up with new like ideas, marketing, et cetera. Oh, God. And, uh, you know, dating apps in 2016 <laughs> were starting to become pretty popular. Oh, they were. Right? Like, that was like still pretty early on, right? There yeah. was like, I think Tinder, maybe Tinder, that was maybe, it, yeah. you know? And uh -huh. uh, yeah, when uh -huh. we came up, we were like, what if we created a dating app for bearded dudes and women that love them? <laughs> You know, there's like fucking farmers, dudes. but that would work. There's like, like if you farmers farmer only, yeah, farmers shit, only, you know? that works. <laughs> if farmers only works, beard love can work. Beard, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we were gonna buy beardlove.com. It was like three or four grand, and we were like, "This is perfect." And it's like all the bearded dudes and the women that love them. And it was like we we're gonna roll it out. It was like Live Bearded was gonna be the official sponsor. It was gonna be different, similar but different business. <laughs> and then we were like. We have no business creating a dating app. <laughs> like we don't have a fucking clue what we're doing. <laughs> I I mean you kind of I mean you built the live beard. I'm not telling you to like re go into this business again. <laughs> But you we created a wrong. bearded community already. I, I can't imagine creating a dating is, app is it, any different. Is it still available? I'm checking right now. <laughs> Gotta check. Oh. I imagine it would be much easier to create a dating app now. Oh, probably. Oh, yeah. There's probably uh, these all these fucking cookies. assholes. Uh, they bought it? No. They're just charging more money for the domain now. It what was 3000 Now they want 7000 Oh. Uh, See, well, 6400 to be exact. Okay. Dicks. But, uh... <laughs> Yeah, Beard, beardlove.com. Beard if you yeah. like the idea, if you would use beardlove.com, <laughs> hit the like, hit comment, the like, drop us a comment, comment. below, yeah. email us and let us know you want a bearded dating app. Never we, say never. Yeah, I mean, it might resurface. It could. If we get enough comments. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we have a big, I mean, we look, we've got a lot of bearded dudes that we can we can flood into the thing. We got a lot of women that follow us that love bearded dudes. Yeah. It could be a The trick, I mean, bearded guys would sign up no problem. Yeah. <laughs> the trick, the trick is to get the women. How do we get the women signed up? Mm. It, I mean, uh, no, let's not hash this part. <laughs> <laughs> next question. Next let's question. go to the next question.